If two fighters are equally matched in skill, the one with the most stamina is going to win the fight. Why? Because he can keep on pushing. There is no such thing, you will hear me say this many times, as having too much stamina. You can always have more. Listen, if you're fighting and there's a moment when, you know, you start gassing a little bit and then your opponent turns it up, trust me, you're going to think, okay, I never want to be in the same position again. So stamina is very, very important. Now, I worked out 10 times a week when I was competing myself. Four of those times, I was going for stamina. Now, now people are going to go, four of those times only. You have to understand this. Every workout is 85% with me. Those four workouts are 100%. Not 99%, 100%. So this is very important, what I'm going to say right now. We're going to do 15 one-minute rounds on the back. Yeah, yeah, right on, boss. That's going to be easy. Every person that does it with me cannot do it. That's weird. It's only one minute but it's the way you're going to do it. And that's what we're going to focus on. So first of all, you can measure yourself if you don't let yourself go. Meaning every single punch, and there's going to be a few kicks as well as a drill, you're going to have to throw as hard as you can. If you decide the minute to do this, guess what? You can do this till tomorrow morning and you'll still have no stamina. It's not going to do anything for you. If you throw every single punch you throw as hard as you can, now we're talking. Now, this I came up with to prepare myself for my 30-minute fight. Yes, that's right. You heard that correctly. In 1993, when I started fighting for Pancras over in Japan, there was one round of 30 minutes. Yeah, I found that out on the day of the fight. That's a nice thing to find out, right? Oh, what about this? My opponent was 32 pounds heavier than I was. Oh, there was no problem, Mr. Rutten, because it's an open weight class. Everybody fights everybody. Really? Yeah. And then together with the 30-minute round, yeah, that put a little bit of doubt in my head. But this drill I figured out is going to be the very, very best. So what we're going to do, we're going to go one minute as hard as we can, and then we have one minute break. And we do this for 15 times. Now, once we can do all 15 rounds, this is where you start increasing. And you increase only weekly by five seconds. And then you take away five seconds of your rest. Meaning, so imagine you can do all 15 rounds, and then next week you say, okay, I'm going to start. Now, the best thing is you need seven weeks before the fight to complete this. So make sure that you can do 15 rounds of one minute before seven weeks before your fight or whatever you're going to do. Because this is stamina good for everything else as well. So, one minute full power. Next week, one minute, five seconds, 55 seconds rest. The next week, one minute, 10 seconds, 50 seconds rest. The next week, one minute, 15, 45 seconds rest. You see what I'm doing here, right? I'm increasing the work time with five seconds and I take five seconds away from resting. And after seven weeks, you will be, do 15, you will be doing 15 one and a half minute rounds with 30 seconds break. What's that going to do for me, boss? Okay, watch any fight out there, boxing, Thai boxing, whatever you watch. And then one fighter turns it up for about 20 seconds, maybe 25 seconds against an opponent, and if he can't put him away, he's gassing, immediately gassing. That's 20, 25 seconds. Now you're gonna be able to do this 15 times, one and a half minute, everything full power. So please trust me, this was the way for me to get in shape. I did this twice a week, and then I did tie pads also twice a week. Tie pads also for me, started with two minute rounds. People gonna go two minute rounds, that's easy. But before the fight, I do seven, six minute rounds. First punch is as hard as my last, very last punch. Everything is maximum power. I actually believe that at the end of my workout, my punches are way harder than I started with, because you start warming up. Okay, so that's the main thing Thing for this particular drill, do everything 100%, otherwise you can't measure where you are. All right, we're going to start. I'm going to break it down. We're going to give you eight different combinations, and I would really follow what I'm going to say, because every single combination will work for you in a fight. They're really the, they work really well, as long as you pay attention to everything that I'm going to tell you. All right, let's start with footwork. Where does the power come from? Come on, boss. I know this. Footwork. Yeah, no. You never heard it the way I'm going to explain to you. And once you hear that, you're going to go like, hey, why is not everybody explaining it like this? Because it's going to make total sense for you and you're going to immediately know how you can generate the, much, the most power. All right, let's go to our footwork. So footwork, I'm going to touch really fast on it because there's going to be some movement around the bag as well. If you move, open, close, just remember that, open, close. What does it mean? My stance is here, open, and whenever I open, I close the same amount. If I move to the left, open, close, open, close, 
open close, open close. This is important. Now you're going to go like, wait a minute, if I'm watching the UFC or watching boxing, there's all these guys doing this. Yeah, that's wrong. That's actually really wrong. Because if you're a Thai boxer, for instance, if as soon as somebody does this, guess what I'm going to do? There's a low kick. How are you going to defend this? You can't. It's going to be very hard. So footwork is very important. You never want to close open. Just think open close. Just start playing around with it, maybe on the street, you know, constantly. It becomes second nature, see? It's very simple once you start focusing on it. Now, where does power come from, boss? This is very important. I'm happy that you asked me that question. So imagine if I want to push this bag away and I stand on one leg. Now, this is a light bag, so I'm probably still going to push, but what I'm going to do also, I'm going to push myself backwards. I need a stick behind the door, so, so to say. So if this foot is on the ground, wait a minute, if I push off on the back foot, oh, that's how I push my bag away. With my left also, boom, okay, wait a minute. So if I give him a jab, which in my stance actually is not a jab because I have an open stance like Mike Tyson had, Ramon Decker's had, some really good fighters in the world who did that, and I just saw that they were the ones that punched and kicked the hardest. So I said, okay, let's apply this to MMA and what do you know? it worked. So pushing off on the back foot, this becomes a straight punch, it's not even a jab anymore. And especially in this open stance, if in a bladed stance, yeah, it's only an arm punch. You can still push a little off on the back foot, but if I'm standing like this, now I can rotate my body, pushing off on my back foot with the left punch and with my right punch. Now every single time, and this is how I trained myself to focus on that, when I throw a cross or a one, I will feel the ball of my foot digging a little dent in this floor. If you have a mat, just like here, every time I feel a little dent, I'm pushing off. This is important. Now, that's for straight punches. Your back foot is for straight punches for power, okay? Okay, by the way, does it mean that I cannot knock you out like this? Of course I can knock you out. If you got a strong arm punch, you can still hit hard. What I'm trying to tell you is, if you can deliver the perfect punch, why wouldn't you want to deliver the perfect punch? Why would you want to do this? Because maybe one punch, if you knock him out, well, the fight's going to be over. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about. So don't worry if you're switching stances and throw a bait out, all good. I'm just telling you, for power, push off on the back foot for straight punches. Hooks, though, are different. Hooks and uppercuts, but let's focus on the hooks first. Now, again, same concept. If I'm standing on one leg and I'm trying to push this, leg, this back to the side, I can't. I'm pushing myself to the side. But wait, if I put two feet on the ground, hey, now I can push it away. What does that mean? That means with hooks, two feet need to be on the ground. 100%. Grab the floor, and that's how you start throwing hooks. Now, with hooks, a lot of people, especially with the left hook, if you're an orthodox fighter, a lot of people like to pivot. I don't believe in it. Um, actually, there is a video out there on YouTube called 10 Best Left Hooks in Boxing History, I believe it's called. Watch that. Tua, Morrison, Ali, Tyson, every single body. And they all say, except for Tyson, uh, they all say you have to pivot. But when they knock people out with the left hook, there is no pivot. Oh, it's so weird. So why would people say it? I have no clue. It makes no sense to me. And especially for double setups, where we're going to... Uh, pay a little bit of attention to it in a little bit, like a left hook and a liver shot. If I do that with pivots, it's gonna take a long time. But let's bring it back now. Every hook you're gonna throw, two feet on the floor. The back foot, the heel is loose from the ground, so you have a little bit more mobility. The front foot, just plant it. Don't worry about it, just rotate your upper body because that's where the power comes from, not from the stupid pivot. And what stupid pivot, what if you miss? You're gonna be overexposed, they're gonna knock you out with a cross. Watch out for that. Now, uppercuts are different. Now, uppercuts on the back we're not going to do because, hey, there is no uppercuts on the back. If you have a body action system, by the way, hey, that's a, a, a device that I developed, you can use uppercuts. So if you don't have it, maybe you wanna look into that if you like to throw uppercuts in the workout. Uppercuts, you're pushing off with the left uppercut a little bit on the left leg as well, but there's also that body rotation, so two feet on the floor again. This is not going to work, not as much. Can you knock somebody out? Sure you can. More power though, both feet on the ground. Same with the right uppercut, a right uppercut, you push off up the right foot, but there's also again body rotation, so two feet on the floor. Okay, now we have that out of the way, let's start and give you some combinations and my way of thinking behind those combinations because once you start doing it and you apply this to every combination you throw in the fight, you're going to be very successful. Listen, they always say that don't force a knockout, it will bring itself. Yeah, they all want to sound cool because that's a cool thing to say. Pretty much every person that I knocked out was a combination I was working on before.
boom, that whole myth is gone right now. Just focus. If I pick out six combinations and I grind them in, I'm talking about thousands of time, times before a fight. Then when the situation presents itself, boom, I throw a combination and most of the time it will result in a knockout. So pay attention because everything with eyesight lining, opening up more, I all do things on purpose. If you see me making a hook like this, it's not bad technique. I do that because I want you to see that hook, I want you to block it because then the next punch is going to land, you see? So sometimes you have to give up a little bit of technique in order to become successful and to connect with the follow-up punch. Well, I'm gonna pay attention to that. Okay, let's start with round number one from the 15 rounds that we're going to do. Round number one, very basic, very simple one. What is the most effective punch combination in boxing? It's a one-two, right? It's still there. Still people get knocked out with it. Somehow it always works. It's only the question when to deliver it because that's of course, that's the gold. That's the good stuff. Now it's a kind of a one-two, but I'm gonna start setting it up with a body shot. So, in order to make this work, you're going to have to be a little bad on your technique. I'm going to do this on purpose. This first punch doesn't really make a sense, but it's not going to knock somebody out. What it does do, it's going to set up your opponent like a freaking charm. It always works. Okay, so the first punch is a left body shot. I call it a left body at Bang Muay Thai, Bas uh, Bang Muay Thai. That's where we have these crazy combinations. We have numbers for combinations. Like nine, it's like a left uppercut, right straight, left hook. Eight is an uppercut hook straight. Normally they say one is the left straight, two is the right straight, three is the hook, four is the hook. We don't do that. With us, numbers are combinations. And then we also have names for combinations and an endless part. And every switching stances, we do everything. But let's go back to this first one, okay? So I'm gonna select technique a little bit. I'm gonna stand sideways, not in the stance that I normally do. It's because if I want to hit somebody to the face like this, Maybe it's not going to work. Why? It's going too fast. I need to slow it down for this person in order for him or her to see what is going on. So my first punch I'm going to throw. Now this I'm going to do spread out over the round. This is not like two or three times in a row because then it's not going to work. But you're going to read them. Watch what I'm going to do. A left body shot. Left body is what we call it. This. Boom. And then you move again and go. Boom. But you see what I'm doing, when I throw the punch, I lower myself, which is a stupid thing to do. You can do it, it's not a big punch, but it's great for a setup. The one thing you have to watch out for though, after this, to get the heck out of there, because a left hook counter, or a cross counter, if they let you miss or they move backwards, watch out for that. So punch, get out. Punch, get out. But every time, make sure you lower yourself. This is the most important, lowering yourself. What he's trying to do, what he's going to do, He's going to put two things together. He's going to realize that every time you lower yourself, a body shot is coming. And that's what we want to paint inside his mind. That picture. Every time I do this, is a body shot. And once you do this three or four times and you connect with the body shot, which is not a hard body shot, so he will allow you to do it, now you're setting him up. Because now he thinks every time you do this, it's going to be a body shot. And of course you guess what I'm going to do next, right? I'm going to fake it. So after I did this, I lower, boom, and I see him starting to get used to reacting to my left body shot. I don't even have to punch anymore. Just doing this, he already thinks it's a body shot. And that's where my cross comes. I go, whoop, boom, and then the cross on top. So what we're going to do, we're going to do left body, left body, right straight. Left body, left body, right straight. But now you know the whole thinking behind it. That's why I said every combination has a way of thinking behind it. It. You follow this to the letter, you will get effective with it. Okay, so during the fight or to the training, the one minute, of course, we need to speed it up because otherwise we're not going to get tired. So we're going to start this. Body, Every time you do the same thing, body, body head, body, body head. If you want, after combination, you can move to the left. Same thing, body, body head. One time, go to the right, body, body head. That's it. One minute, as hard as you can. This is a great warm up, and get ready because much more is going to come. And after round number four, you're going to get really freaking tired. Yes even after one single minute. One more thing that I have to mention, because when we throw with power, automatically we mix in some aggression. And once aggression and emotions come in, we start getting a little uncontrolled. And what you're going to do, some of you, with a body shot, and they're gonna close the distance too fast. And now you're punching here. This punch doesn't have any reach. 
The real, the real power of a punch is at the very end of your punch, just before it's the very end. So this will be the perfect mo uh, space for me to hit somebody with a straight punch. Always think about that. So if you get angry, you want to go, ah, and you're coming too close, this is not good. You should change that punch to an elbow, but since it's to a body and a cross, let's just stay away from the back. So here, boom. So give it room, give that punch room. What I always say is this, it's very simple. If I give a, take a bow and arrow, right? And I pull it and I hold it against the back and I let it go. Well, it's gonna go maybe this deep in the back. That's about it. But if I step three yards backwards and then now I give that arrow space so it can develop power and speed, more importantly speed. Now that thing is gonna go really deep into the back. That's the same with punches. Here, you're too close for a straight punch. It's better to throw an uppercut, a hook, or maybe an elbow if you're doing karate or Thai boxing or mixed martial arts. But you see what I mean? Distance from the target is very important. This will come back in every single punch that you're going to throw during these 15 rounds. Now, if you're a smart person, you already think, ooh, I see what he's doing. He throws you a punch, and once people start reacting to it, then he adds a punch. That is basically my entire fighting system. It's very simple. So the next one we're going to do is a cross hook cross. Remember the footwork, it's important. The cross you push off on the back foot, the hook two feet on the floor, and the cross you push off on your back foot. Now you're gonna see how difficult it is going to be to do it non-stop. When I shadow box, is the only thing I focus on, footwork. I both feet on the ground with hooks, and I'm pushing off on my back foot for straight punches, left or right, doesn't really matter. Focus, focus, focus. So after doing it for how many years, and I've been doing it for a very long time, it's my only focus. It will never be good enough. So always strive for excellence. I always mention this, magnanimity, striving for excellence. That's a word you should lock up in your mind, because if you do something, why not try to make it the best possible? That's what I always like to do. Always go for excellence. Okay, so a cross who cross. Now this is important that you go with a good speed, right? The, 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 the right distance. Cross, hook, cross, so it's a little longer of a hook because the, the, the cross is a long punch. And then when that works and when you connect with it, your opponent kind of gonna expect you to do it again. And you're gonna give it to him. But this time, you're gonna add a body shot. And most of the time, that body shot is not gonna be ready for that because he thinks you're gonna do exactly the same combination. Now, if you see me fight, uh, all the fights that I had, that's the concept I pretty much always use. I give you something, give you something, give you something, and once you get used to it, I give the same thing, but I add a punch or a kick, and most of the time, that's the knockout, okay? Or at least, the demise to a knockout. So, it's gonna be cross, who cross, and now it's very important to cross, hook, cross, and look my eyes. I'm looking him dead in the eye, and there's the body shot. Now, cross, hook, cross is right, left, right. Cross, hook, cross, lever is right, left, right, left. Don't do, and I see a lot of people do this, pa, 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 pa. Don't do that, there is no beat. It should be one, two, three, four. Otherwise, you take the fluidity out of the combination. The longer your right is, the harder your left is going to be. The longer your left is, the harder your right is going to be. The longer your right is, the harder that body shot is going to be. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. That's, uh, that's a pattern, and I'm gonna use more patterns. You're gonna see it in the next combinations, because then we're gonna get really crazy. So what you're doing during the fight, go ha, ha, ha. And after he's used that, you do the same. You give him the body shot. But the most important thing with the body shot is to not look down. Keep your eyes glued on his face, in his eyes. I would lock eyes with the guy, and then go for the body shot. Now, if you want to throw a good liver shot, it's not a hook, it's not an uppercut, it's, not, it's, it's, a, it's a combination of everything. I like to stab it in there. I always say it like this, and this sounds maybe really weird. Imagine you're Wolverine, but you have only one knife sticking out here, right, in the middle. If I give him a body shot and I pull it back, if that hole is exactly the same size as the knife, it's a perfect punch. Once you slice the person open and the guts fall out, you spread it out, the impact, it's wrong. Why wouldn't you want to throw a hook to the body? Because the only defense the person has to do is this, and then you're going to miss. You see, if I give a hook and move moves backwards, that's a problem. If I give a stabbing and he moves backwards, I'm still gonna nail him. So it's important that you hit him in a little upward angle. What I always like to say is hit the body shot just below the rib, the floating ribs, and then try to come out of the shoulder blade here. 
That's what I visualize with my mind. So again, cross who cross, break, and then again, cross who cross, body shot. But keep him dead stared in the eye. That's the most effective thing to do. By the way, guys, you can make up your own rounds, of course, right? I'm just giving you examples. I would really pay attention to the way I explain it, because then once you start applying it in training, you're going to realize, oh my God, boss is right. These freaking things, they land. Don't do all seven or eight we're going to go over right away. Just pick one. One that I really would like you to pick is, for instance, this one. This one I told to Dwayne Ludwig when he fought Jens Pulver uh, for the world title in Canada. And Dwayne, Bang Muay Thai, it's always been a very close student of mine. We became really good friends, and now we have the Boss Rudin's Bang Muay Thai system that we both together do. Look into that if you really want to know about striking, okay? Um, so I told him in the dressing room, I want you to throw a big left hook and a right straight to the body. And that will be a hit. Why? Because if you make, make a big left hook, you're going to block it, and then there's the clear path to the straight to the body. Now, this is important for you again to know. Make it a long hook. If it's MMA, open hand. That's a of open hand, palm strike. Because the longer the hook is, the more room you're going to have for that straight punch, right? If it's a short hook, now you only have this distance. And we talked already about distance. The more distance, the better it is for a punch. So a long hook and a straight to the body. That's the first thing we're going to throw. That straight to the body is going to be a hit, almost guaranteed. I can throw this in sparring and I can tell you I'm going to do it and the only way for you to let me miss is to move backwards. If you don't, I'm gonna nail you with it. Now hit that thing as hard as you can. The left hook doesn't really matter. It needs to be fast, it needs to freak him out so he brings that hand up, full power to the body. Once you connect with that body shot, if he goes down, good, that's already, it's a wrap. If he doesn't go down, he still will be afraid from your, stra from your straight to the body. Now some acting we're going to throw into the, in the head. Now you're going to go to him because you're going to feel that you connected hard. You can look him back and then you tell him at the safe distance, of course, nice punch, right? Watch, here's coming again. Just tell him what you're going to do because this time he's going to be ready for it. I'm making quotation marks here with my gloves, which you can't understand, right? He's going to be ready for it and now he's going to block that straight to the body. And you see already what's going to happen. We're going to add a punch to the head. Now you can also add two punches, that's up to you, but let's just break it down. Left hook, right body, break, left hook, right body, left hook. That combination, super effective. The longer you make your left hook, the harder the straight to the body is. All right, so you're going to go boom, boom, and then right a little bit later in the fight, ha, 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 you throw another left hook to the head, you add that punch, and most of the time that punch is going to knock him out. Now it's just a left hook. Might as well add a cross if you like. That's all up to you, okay? Now you can start playing around with it. So that will be left hook, right body, and then the second time, bam, 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 bam. maybe you want to add a cross to it, it's up to you. Maybe you want to add a liver shot after that cross. You see, now we're starting to create yourself. Again, that's very important. So find combinations, set them up with a certain combination. Once he thinks you're going to do exactly the same thing, throw exactly the same thing, but add a punch or a kick, and most of the time, as I explained before, that's going to be the knockout. Round number four, left right body. Who does that? Well, I've never seen anybody do it, so chances you're going to be effective with it, it's very hard, uh, 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 possibility is very high. So it's a left right to the body. Now, this is the problem, if you do this in sparring, and you do it light, they're not going to respect the body shot. And what happens if they don't respect the body shots? If I'm going to throw two body shots like this, you're going to block him? No, you're not going to block him. You know, so you have your hands open, maybe you get to go for a counter. So first of all, when you throw a one-two to the body, get always get the heck out of there. I always talk about this with the very, very first combination, the left hook counter. That's a very overused counter, which is a very effective one, or maybe a cross from him can be the same thing. If you throw a one-two to the body, puff, there's my left hook. Or if I move out, I can come with a cross. So watch out for that always. Punch, punch, get the heck out of there. It's good for you to spar sometimes or do shadow boxing, and after every combination, push yourself backwards. It's really hard on your calves, but it's really good for you to be in and out the whole time. So the left right body shot, if you hit it with power, you're going to force that person in order to block it. And once that happens, that's where we're going to add two punches on the top. It's very basic stuff, right? But it works really well. So you're going to go to the body, ah, ah, 
two body shots as hard as you can. And then right away after he's used to that, so maybe you want to do this two, three times around uh, in the first round, we add a little ad-libbing in between. And then suddenly once you see him getting used to the one, two body shot, which you throw with power, you add a hook cross on top. All right, so there's a whole thing, bam, bam. And once he's getting used to this, you're going to go, ha, 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 ha. You're going to do the one, two, three, four. And that's it. If you like to add a liver shot, that's up to you again, but I will keep it very basic for now, and then later on you can start expanding. Round number five. Okay, I'm gonna throw right hooks. And as you can see with this arm here, there's a whole dent here. I had four neck surgeries, I lost a lot of power in my right arm. So my right hooks are sometimes not gonna look very good. So don't focus on my right hook, make it better. The left hook, this is how you want to throw. The hook, by the way, the elbow needs to be in the same line as the hand or below it, that's okay. What you don't want to have is what you see a lot of guys do, higher. That's a stupid thing to do because if I throw with a lot of power, you see you're going to throw your, 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 maybe your shoulder even out of the socket and you can't put your body weight in there because there is no real power there. But if you go here, you see you can put all your body weight in that punch, very important again, two feet on the floor with the hooks, right? And after everything that I say, throw three punches, get out of there. Always in and out of movement. And also what I didn't talk about in the other rounds is if like the last one was left, right body, left, right body, left hook, right straight. This is how you do it with the one minute. Bam, 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 bam. You really want to put some work in there, okay? You want to make as many combinations, but good ones and hard ones in that one single minute. Okay, go back to this one. We're gonna go head three liver, that's what we call it. Head three with us is a left, right, left hook. If you're an orthodox fighter or a southpaw, it will be right, left, right hook. But for now, since I'm orthodox, it's lead hand, back hand, lead hand. We're gonna get them used to this again. So during sparring or during fighting, if you get in a clinch, you just give them three hooks to the head. Bam, bam, bam. It's all upper body rotation. You're gonna make it faster, of course. Once he gets used to those three punches, you do exactly the same and you add a liver shot. This is one of my favorite combinations. It works always very well, as, especially if you keep looking him dead in the eye. Look at my eye line. Bang, bang, bang. And then bang, bang, bang. Load up, keep looking him dead in the eye, and there's the body shot. Now there's another little thing that you can do with this. It's a lot of information, guys. That's why I, that's why I break it down like this. But trust me, it's, it's all gold stuff if you really take it to, to the heart because this is really gonna help you. Now, when I wanna set up a body shot after a combination, I'm gonna slack a little bit on my technique. I'm gonna throw my hooks from here. You see what I'm doing? I'm throwing them from here. Why would I do that? Because if I throw my hooks from here, like everybody will teach you, at a body shot from here, I kind of telling him where the body shot is going to come, when the body shot is going to come. But if I give my three hooks to the head already from here, and then the liver shot comes, you see, the load up is exactly the same as the three hooks to the head, which makes it way harder for him to detect that I'm gonna give him a body shot. And now I know what you're thinking. Yeah, but boss, when you throw those hooks, they can counter you. Yeah, you know who throws hooks like that as well? Mike Tyson, when did he get countered? You know when you don't get countered? When you throw something fast and hard. If I throw with power and speed, I'm gonna force my opponent into defense. You really think if Mike Tyson, somebody, Mike gives three hooks to somebody, his head, he's gonna go in between, he's gonna to try to do this? No, he's busy defending himself for his life in this case because Mike, it's just really freaking hard. So don't worry about it. That's all people telling you. Yes, yeah, stationary, if I do it slow motion, now you can hit me. If I go speed, there's no way you're gonna, and plus, you don't know when I'm gonna throw the combination. Right? So we got speed on our side, we got power on our side, and we have on our side that he doesn't know when I'm gonna throw the combination. So what you're doing is this, you're gonna go here, ha, 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 and after that you do it again, go ha, 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 keep looking dead in the eye, and there's your body shot. Do not even blink down because then he knows she's going to be a body shot. Look him dead in the eye, and load up exactly the same. Round number six, we're gonna flip what we just did. You remember, head three, three hooks to the head, and then with the body shot while keeping high, we're gonna do exactly the other way around. Like I said before, 
If somebody throws hooks at me, very easy way to let him miss is simply moving backwards. So when do you think is the best way to throw three hooks to the head? When your opponent has his back against the wall or against the ropes. If he can't back up, now is the time for you to throw a combination like this. Okay, because otherwise with hooks, I simply move away, that's it. You got no reach on him. So now I'm gonna do the same thing. So imagine, boom, he hit the fence and he stands with his back against the fence. He can't move back and we're gonna give him three body shots. Boom, boom. You can do this also right away immediately, but now for the sake of the drill, because it's a concept what we're doing right now, just do it like this. Three hooks to the body, three hooks to the body with the left hook to the head. We're gonna do exactly the same trick as we did before. Remember, we look him dead in the eye, we give him the body shot. Now we look at the body and we give him the head shot. Guys, I cannot even stress enough how, how, how much this works. So please do it like this. If you look up, he's gonna know you're gonna hit him in the head. Don't look up. The body shots make him hard, as hard as you can. You need to get to force this person to block those shots because that will open the, the head for the hook. Okay, three hooks to the body and then three hooks to the body with a left hook to the head. Left, right, left, left, right, left, left. That's your pattern. Pa, 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 pa. That's what I think when I throw a combination like this. Tang, 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 tang. That beat. That's my load up because there's a double left there. It's a reload as we call it. So standing here, you go, ha, ha, ha. and after you did that, you go, ha, 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 ha. you see, I didn't look up. Yes, it might be technical, maybe not as well, but it's a freaking hard punch. He's never gonna expect it. One, two, three, break. One, two, three, keep looking down, boom, and there's your body, uh, your headshot. Trust me, this will work, but make sure they have their back against the wall, against the rope. Round number seven, what I'm going to do is kind of the same uh, beat that we did before. Pa, 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 pa. We're gonna give him a three. Now with Bang Muay Thai, a three is a left, right hook. That's a three combination. Three and a liver shot. That's gonna be the second one. So, three, Pow, 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 and once he's used to that, three in the liver. Pow, 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 keep looking high, and go for the body shot. If I look down, I hit high. If I look high, I can't hit low, all the time. That's what I like to do, because it really messes people up. Try it out, it's going to be, sometimes, just looking is not enough. Demeanor is even better. If I look at the body like this, and then I throw a left hook, to the head, it's very effective. Sure, it might take a little bit of power away because it's not technically sound, but guess what, if he doesn't expect a punch, well, you know, the punch that you can't see coming is most of the time the punch is going to knock you out, right? That's what they say. Again, bam, 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 beat. Bam, 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 beat. But keep going as hard as you can. That's how you want to throw it for one freaking minute as hard as you can. All right, the last round we're going to do is kicks. And now you're gonna go buzz, but wait, there's only eight rounds. Yes, I want you to double it up. To do it again, the whole series, do it again. So which makes it actually 16 rounds, or you leave the kicks off, or you leave any of the punch combination off that you want and make it 15 rounds. And what if you make it 16 rounds? Huh? More is always better, that's what I uh, figured out. So I'm gonna throw one kick, one kick, right, left, then double right, double left, triple right, triple left, and go back to one. Now it's important that you're gonna kick hard. It's not important that you see these guys doing this. <coughs> That's nice and dandy, you know, it's not gonna really do anything. Maybe it's gonna put a dent, maybe it's gonna hurt his skin, I don't know. It's nice for stamina if you do it long enough. But you know what's good for stamina? Doing it as hard as you can. That's what I like to do, because that's what I'm gonna do in a fight as well. I'm gonna kick as hard as I can. I like to kick even on the defense of the guy as hard as I can. If I say, you see he's blocking the kick, I just kick as hard as I can. Why would I do that? I want him to feel the power of my kicks. Because even when he blocks it, he's gonna go, shit, I better block these kicks. You see, now I'm inside his head. And I'll do it to the other side as well. I'm trying to take away as many freaking things that he has, you know, break him down, break him down. So sometimes just kicking hard is very important, especially when somebody blocks a stupid kick like this. You see this many times, and what the fighter does, he takes the power of the kick. Okay, so let me see. Is there so, what would you say 
if I tape a focus mitt to my head with tape, duct tape, and I tell uh, a good kicker, I say, kick me in the head. You think I'm going to go down? Yeah, right? I'm going to go down. So, with that said, why would you do this? That's exactly the same what you're doing. You make yourself one with your head. A kick you always want to block away from you. The further away the better because if a kick cannot completely to come to its end, there's not a lot of power. It's like stopping a punch here instead of stopping a punch at the end. You see, that's the same with a kick. If I stop it here already or I let it release all the speed and all the space, yeah, it's going to be harder to block. I like to block a kick there already. Sounds weird, works really well. If somebody knees me to the body, you think I'm going to block like this? No, you know what I actually do? I hold my hands on the knees. I don't even let them take off because there's no power there. That's my whole concept, how I fight. Okay, so it's very important that you kick with power. So the upper body comes first. If you want to see a really, if you want to see perfect technique, Ramon Deckers. Ramon, you know how to spell it, D-E-K-K-E-R-S. Ramon Deckers highlight is my favorite Thai boxer of all time. Unfortunately, he passed away. He was a friend of mine. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's even Tyson, they call him the Tyson of Thai boxing. Uh, and Mike Tyson is freaking, he loves the guy. That, it's, it's so powerful. And if you see him kick, what you see him do is this. Because kicking power, all the power comes from your upper body rotation. Which actually, by the way, is all your punching power. Also comes from upper body rotation. Because that's how you can generate so much force. With a kick, you see him kick. And then the, the, uh, you see him turning his upper body. And then he releases the kick. So the kick comes a little bit later. But that propels that kick. And if you make the kick dead weight, well, it's like hitting somebody with a 60-pound uh, baseball bat. Yeah, that's going to hurt, right? So it's important that you rotate your upper body. So don't kick like this simultaneously. It's not really going to work. I want you to rotate your upper body. <laughs> and let the kick come a little bit later. First the upper body, then the kick. I'm going to put a feather up my own butt here. Go on YouTube, Boss Wooden Kicks Crash Test Dummy. And when I saw that footage, I think, thank you Lord, because I kicked the correct technique. I was very worried about that. You literally see me kicking a ki crash test dummy, and you see my whole body being like here, and my right foot is still on the floor. And then I release the leg, and I cut numbers that they've never seen before. There were other fighters, I tripled everybody. So it was a really powerful kick, but it comes from the upper body rotation. So I'm not only the person who can do it, you can do it as well. You're just gonna have to use upper body rotation. So very basic, I'm not gonna go too hard because I haven't been kicking for a long time, since 2006, I have to say, since my last fight, because I got banged up with all the neck surgeries. One kick, one kick, two kick, two kick, three kick, three kick. So nice and relaxed, go whoop, boom, and then let them come here, whoop, boom, and then go to whoop, hey, and hey, I go to the other side, hey, hey, and then you go three, hey, whoop, hey, whoop, hey, and then you want to do it to the other side, also one, two, and three. The last ones that you heard was really with the shin, so you don't hear a splash, but you hear a thud, preferably you want to hear that sound. All right, just upper body rotation, kick with the middle part of your shin, because that's where you want to connect with, that will do the most damage. Hey, this is very important, before you start kicking, you know, especially if you get at an age like myself, you want to warm up, you want to stretch a little bit. This is important. If you're a fighter and you have to cut a lot of weight, you really want to start warming up because you're dehydrating yourself and that means also less fluids in your tendons and your muscles and you might rip them faster. So make sure you always stretch. All right. So there you have it. Again, this is important. Everything as hard as you can because otherwise you don't know where you are. Just bro. One minute, one minute five, one minute ten, one fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, and then you stop one and a half minute rounds with thirty seconds break. Trust me, if you can do fifteen or sixteen of those, you're gonna be ready for world title fights. I was always known for my stamina, which is weird kind of because you know now when I get really into breathing and to strengthening your breathing muscles, my stamina is so much better. I would like you to pay attention to that. Go to o2trainer.com. O2Trainer.com. That's a website where they sell this device that will train your breathing muscles. This is weird when I say this because your lungs don't do anything, they're just two bags. But trust me on this. It's filled with published medical journals that support everything that I say. Go to how to use. And there's a tape, there's a video that you can click on 
What does the O2 trainer do for you? In that video, I explain how you breathe. Changed my life, changed a lot of fighters. Leo de Machida, I mean, he was like, he couldn't believe what's going on. So it's doing tremendous things. If you're a chest breather, which 95% of us are, you're breathing wrong. That means you can take up to five times more oxygen in your body. With me, dramatically changed everything in my life, especially the stamina department. So even when I was good in shape, you saw me during fights, breathing like this, that's completely gone. It's all, it's all belly breathing. Think about this, raising your shoulders, four to six of these breaths is the same as one belly breath. So once you start changing that, world's gonna open. Push, 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 this is very important. Footwork is very important. Straight punches, push up on your back foot. Hooks and uppercuts, two feet, upper body rotation. The more you rotate your upper body, the more power you will have. I would suggest to you to do as much upper body rotation as you can. Because the more you do in training, you're not going to do it in the fight. And why you're not going to do it in the fight is because it's too much work and it slows you down. But I always say, if you exaggerate with your upper body motion, and then in the fight only 20% comes back from it, that's still 20%. If you don't do it, well, 20% from nothing is nothing, right? So it's not going to work at all. So the more rotation, look at Mike Tyson. I always talk about Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson, if he throws three left hooks, let's say a left hook, a left uppercut, and a liver shot, right? It's three lefts. Yeah, pa, pa, pa. And in slow motion, you will see him doing this. Boom. Complete rotation with every punch he throws. And that's why he can create, it can generate such an insane power because his body can contract at a very fast rate. I mean, I've never seen anybody doing it as fast as he can. So uh, not Roman Deggers, not myself, nobody. I mean, he's there. We're unfortunately, we're much lower there. So focus on that because the more you do it again, the more comes back during the fight and you're going to be so powerful. It also makes your punches longer. And the longer the punches are, the more time it had to travel. So what more power they will have. You see what I mean? So make it long, make it hard, rotate that body, Godspeed, and party on OSU. And that means OSU, O-S-U, comes from two words. It's not OS. O-O-S-H-I means push. And Shinobu means endure. To push and to endure. OSHI, Shinobu, put it together, O-S-U. OSU. That's from now on a word that I want you to use before you go to do a workout and you don't want to do a workout. And remember this. If you don't want to do a workout, but still do the workout, now you not only are physically stronger, you're also mentally stronger. Because for me, if I go to the gym, I'm at the gym six o'clock in the morning every single day. That's what I do. And I don't, 90% of the time, I don't want to work out. But I know that if I still work out, I'm not only going to give myself, make myself mentally stronger, I'm also physically stronger, I'm also going to make myself mentally stronger. So this is important that you do it. You don't have to avoid everything. Sometimes you have to do well. Most of the time you have to do the things that you don't like because that's the only way you can get stronger. That's how addiction starts, right? Not want to do it, not want to do it. Drink a beer, drink a beer. I don't want to stop. No, it's tough. The tough guy says no at a certain moment. And once you have the power to say no and you actually don't do it, that's when you start building up a good habit. And once that happens, your life is going to change and you can do this with every single thing. All right, Godspeed everybody, and here we go. Awesome.